So everybody, uh, this is the recap on the Laurel Highlands Day 3. We need to start with an apology. Sorry, uh, on behalf of uh, DBT, that it has taken us so long to get the Day 3 and Day 4 and more videos posted. There's been a bit of a break in there. It's like a whole new moon, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> We are called DBT for a reason. We're dads and we got responsibilities. And yeah. as much as we love doing this, uh, sometimes uh, his work or my work or kids or whatever, we got to prioritize. So it's life. It's good life. Uh, day three. Honestly, uh, it was spectacular. We had crazy nice weather, absolutely beautiful views, uh, day three, and uh, even, I think best of all, uh, even better than either of those was the fellowship on the trail. Just outstanding. It was amazing. Great, 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 great day on the trail for DVT, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> So day three actually starts off with some real treats. Right after crossing Route 30, you get that beautiful stream crossing. <laughs> so we're just south of the Route 30 shelter where we stayed last night. Uh, got in about uh, a little over 12 miles yesterday, uh, counting the spurs to go see everything. And um, now we are headed to the Route 31 shelter. Uh, it's going to put us probably around, I think trail miles is 14, but probably with us messing around and hanging out beam rocks and a few other places today, uh, it's going to be looking at about 16 miles for the day, crossing plenty of streams. So unlike on day one, we don't have to carry as much water with us. And these amazing rock formations are just beautiful. Uh, like check this one out right here, right up there. Just lots of that. I mean, who doesn't love that, right? Weather forecast for today is supposed to be uh, about 70 degrees and sunny. Maybe a chance of pop-ups in the afternoon, but hopefully we'll avoid those and get our miles in today and enjoy the trail. So. We'll check in with you later. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, see you soon. Just another one of these beautiful mountain streams. And with all that rain the last couple of days, this water is just absolutely fantastic. Awesome. Slippery. Day three on the trail is just full of this stuff. Oh, it is gorgeous, man. These streams, these rocks. Oh, love it. Gorgeous, man. Oh no. Somebody lost the tip of their trekking pole over there. <laughs> Oops. How would you not know all of a sudden that your right stick is just. Put it on the rock? 
not contacting anything. I would think I would figure that out within a step or two. Approaching mile marker 43, there it is. And uh, we just walked into a spruce grove a couple hundred yards back. Maybe hemlocks, I don't know. And uh, we're going to go cool off in the stream. Cool and shady. Trail's a little bit soggy. But uh, if it means we get the pleasure of a beautiful highlands mountain stream wow slick and uh we'll take soggy as long as nobody twists an ankle as my foot shoots out from under me And there's the run. That is stained quite the shade of brown from all the tannins it looks like. But man, is this beautiful. All right, so Captain and I just took a pit stop and uh, dunked our shirts in water, cool off, and hiking through this hemlock grove. You can see by some of these trail markings uh, they are fresh, and there are tons of them. Easy to tell what trail you're on. There's a couple of the trails. Must be a state park right here. Uh, a couple of the trails go through this area, and they've done a fantastic job making sure that we're, you know, these goofballs at least are staying on the right trail. A couple more miles, and we'll be at Beam Rocks. We'll check in with you there. So we were in the area of Spruce Flats, came up out of the uh, creek stream bed area. And in this area of flats, uh, let's see, there's three or four fern plants. Just a few. Per square foot. Yeah. For thousands upon thousands and thousands of square feet. Oh yeah. This, this is, is a this is absolutely amazing out here. Gorgeous. Holy cow. It's like a movie set. This is uh, something you'd see in a Tolkien film, you know. Peter Jackson would want to use this for something. This is just it's spectacular. So just I'm gonna see my Patronus running on the cross. <laughs> Would a black bear run or just lumber? Black bear would come right after me. <laughs> oh, thank you again, trail maintainers. I think uh, I think you might get a donation from this crew in recognition of your efforts. The trail is actually in really good shape given all the rain we've had the last few days and uh, the blazes are fresh and plentiful you guys we saw a couple of DCNR staff out cutting logs that were uh, blocking the trail downfall they uh, not only were they out there working hard but they had smiles on their faces and words of encouragement for us as we trundled through so I think I cut some in some of our video before. We talked about Laurel Highlands Hiking Trail Shelter Fund. I'll show you a picture of their uh, patch and we'll get a link in our description down below. Yes. But 
Captain and I definitely made a donation to their fund. Thank you very much. We, we thought all of their workers are trail maintainers. Holy cow. They do a great job. Yep. White tailed deer at 12 o'clock. Oh, and there it goes. Oh dear. Chris, the Patronus? As you saw, uh, it starts off, you've got lots of beautiful stream crossings, lots of great rock formations. We have uh, lots of great fern glens. We found uh, the X Factors Patronus there in the fern glen. What are the odds? Uh, yeah. that, that was like <laughs> freaky how that like <laughs> meshed together. The editing on that is actually almost nearly real time. Uh, X here yeah. made his comment about finding his Patronus and it was minutes later that we indeed rounded a corner and there's that doe standing there it was on insane. the trail. It was insane. My marker 41, just about to make a right turn and head up onto Beam Rocks. All right, DBT Tales and Trails. There's the sign, top of rocks. Let's get, let's get this video of Mr. Dice's reaction of his first visit. To the top of beam rocks. When we walk out on top, Mooch and Grudge will already be there taking in the view looking east over Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen and Professor X, I present to you Beam Rocks on the Laurel Highlands Hiking Trail in southwestern Pennsylvania. Yes! All right. Well, if you got to eat lunch somewhere on the trail, could be worse. Could be worse. Oh, what a hike, dude. It's been an awesome day. These five miles fabulous. Aren't they? Fabulous. Yeah, this is just glorious weather. Weather, yeah. The uh, trail. Yeah, this is incredible. Um, I do need to give a particular mention to Beam Rocks. For those of you who have never been, if you go up to Laurel Ridge, uh, put Beam Rocks on your list. Um, the views up there of uh, southwestern Pennsylvania and the countryside are absolutely spectacular, particularly so for us uh, given our weather there. Um, and we also, you may have picked up on something happening involving a GoPro tripod. I don't know if the X wants to give you a recap on how that went, but uh, another phenomenal DPT save. Went down the hill and found the, uh, found the spot, searched around, and there you go, man found your tripod. So GoPro's back in action for tripod shots for Laurel Highlands trip. Now, we get the luxury of hiking back up the hill around all the cliffs. So, <laughs> it's all part of the fun. So the audio didn't turn out on the GoPro uh, tripod recovery mission, uh, but uh, you know, 
needless to say, uh, just like we have our camera set up here and we're recording on the GoPro right now, uh, Captain here uh, was fiddling around with his tripod, his whole little arm, GoPro arm, and while we were trying to get a image ready to go, uh, take a picture of the group on top of this beautiful rock, beautiful background. Yeah. Ting, 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 ting. <laughs> and all of a sudden, like, what's missing? What was that? What was that? <laughs> and then he realized his tripod was gone. And sure enough, it fell off the cliff, off a few rocks, off a few more rocks, way down. And uh, yeah, it, it, it was a challenge to recover it, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. And it was hats off to uh, X and Mooch because they volunteered, hiked down to the bottom of the rock face uh, while Grudge and I stood up top trying to point out, we think it went that way. <laughs> and uh, no joke, these gentlemen got down there and uh, Eagle Eyes here, the X Factor, walked right up on it. Boom, I got it. And, and it off, wasn't off we went. It wasn't just walking, you had to boulder up. So <laughs> even though we walked down, I still had to climb up about 35 feet through boulders yeah. in order to just luckily, really stupid luck, just stepping on top of it. Nope, it was. So uh, Beam Rocks is phenomenal. Even better when you find your GoPro tripod. <laughs> So, I wish somebody would have said, hey, you could uh, filter up towards the top of this hill. Instead, we're carrying a couple liters of freshly filtered water from the bottom of the hill. Uh, beautiful stream up here, though. Beautiful. Oops. We're almost nine miles in for the day. Feeling good, really good. Uh, about another five, six to go. Uh, figure be there hopefully by five o'clock. But uh, get our steepest climb or biggest climb of the day coming up here in a moment. Uh, then we're gonna cross the interstate, sign our log books, and keep on going. But uh, Captain and I were just talking, and it turns out uh, next weekend there's an ultra here at Laurel Highlands, and a 70 mile race. Just can't wrap our heads around doing all of this trail in one day. So, hats off to the athletes who are gonna be conquering that challenge next week. They're amazing. Uh, also, hats off, congratulations, thank you to all the trail maintainers uh, who are getting this trail and ready for those runners and for us. Uh, we know the trail's well blazed, logs have been cut out, uh, trail's in great condition to come hike it, so uh, this is fantastic. <laughs> so glad I'm here. No, that's a black snake. Beautiful. Look at him. Rock with the fossilized plant.
37. Laurel Highlands Trail, uh, one of the only backpacking trails I'm aware of, the only one I'm of which I'm aware of, which I have hiked, has its own custom footbridge across the uh, interstate freeway. Very cool. Tried doing a little GoPro filming there that did not work out. Fortunately, the ex had his camera going, so we got some uh, something to share. Okay. That was pretty cool, crossing interstate. Now we're on the south side of Laurel Highlands. This is fantastic. Another little beautiful stream crossing. More rocks. Trail's still a little wet, but it's all right. Our feet are dry. No rain today. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. There have been uh, benches all along. Trail maintainers are fantastic. Uh, a little uh, checkerboard set that was out yesterday. A lot of people have in their uh, Laurel Highlands videos. That's fantastic. So, tic tac toe board. I know that. Not checkers. <laughs> um, right now, just rocking it all the way through. See in a little bit. <laughs> and discovered somewhere around there that uh, when you follow Mooch on the trail, you are literally following a trail of food. And so it is the, in the truest sense, trail mix. It, um, it is. I, I don't know how that guy eats. I mean, it looks like it. He looks like he's eating normally. I don't know how much he's getting into him. He misses his mouth or something. I don't know. You're walking along. You're like, there's peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. Like a Hansel and Gretel story. So we were able to follow Mooch everywhere he went, uh, just from the little trail of peanuts and gorp and everything going there. So we're gonna have to talk to him on that leave no trace thing. So don't worry if, if you're gonna comment below and tell us about that. We were already on top of it because we were picking it up after him. Yep. So uh, sign the logbook there that they've got there for uh, trail visitors. Record your hike. So we're about a mile and a half from camp. We got one more decent stream to cross. I think we're gonna stop and get our water for camp for tonight in the morning. Uh, they have pumps at the campsite shelter area, but I think we'd rather go ahead and uh, get some clean stream water. Uh, I know I would, I think the other guys do too. So we'll go ahead and stop there take a break get her water it's about uh, quarter after four right now so uh, 5 30 back at the campsite camp set up dinner and uh, called a great day we'll say close to about 16 miles for the day with all of the uh, stops and beam rocks and hunting for tripods and all that good stuff so as day three came to a close, it was pretty obvious that a few of us were feeling a little better than a few of, few of us. So some of us were feeling all right, and some of us yeah. weren't. So we, uh, we decided, again, we should have realized, having seen the way the streams are running up to that point, we thought, well, the last really good stream crossing down the hollow, let's go ahead and water up and we'll carry it into camp. Again, that stream water is so much better than, than the water from the pumps, but. We did stop in the stream. Filtered some water. Even got my uh, dirty bag of water in my pack. Captain up there ahead of me. He's got his water packed up and uh, grudge. 
and Mooch. Both are loaded up with water too. Because it turns out we had a great night in camp weather-wise. We had the whole camp to ourselves. Beautiful stream running right through the middle of camp, which made carrying all that water all that much harder. Um, <laughs> you, could, you just hear it all night long. Uh, We're like, why did we carry the water? Why funny. did we carry that water? We, uh, got, we got a visit from the ranger. Uh, ranger gave us some good advice and, t and told us a little bit more about the uh, firewood shelters we're building uh, at some of the stations, at some of the campsites. And so uh, it was a fantastic night, fantastic uh, yeah. uh, weather. So couldn't ask for any more. Taking it nice and easy. It's just after five now. So give myself about half an hour to get there. And uh, that's relaxation time. As a result, we watered up with pounds and pounds and pounds of delicious stream water and proceeded to carry it up the hill and over the last ridge and in, to camp for the night. Uh, but at that point, I was hitting a wall. Um, I had developed a heat rash, which is something I have never had on the trail. I've never had out in the backcountry at all. And uh, I just think two days prior, you know, the two days prior, constantly being drenched by the rainstorms, the sweat, and the salt from my sweat, the, the bug repellent, the sunscreen, all this stuff building up, just the end of this beautiful, otherwise beautiful day, just yeah. I exploded, man. I just ended up with this terrible heat rash. And uh, so I was suffering by the time we got into camp. Grudge had a couple of small blisters that he had treated and taken care of uh, on the end of day two, going into day three. That just went out of control on day three. So he and I, by the time we got into camp, were struggling. Um, so we made the difficult decision, Grudge in particular, because he was headed out west to Yellowstone just a couple of days later, when we knew uh, right after our trip was wrapping up. He's taking the family out. He didn't want to be incapacitated for his trip to Yellowstone. So uh, he decided to pull the plug. I thought it would probably be best if I didn't try and force my condition any further. So at the end of day three, we made the difficult decision to call our adventure at the Highlands. Um, and uh, we were going to pull the plug the, the next morning. And uh, I was going to head into Ohio pile, be in position, be ready for Mooch and the X Factor. Yeah, we, we contemplated. We actually, actually talked about it for a few minutes. And Mooch and I and were like, you know, go, no, go. Do we want to stick with these guys? These guys are, are cutting their trip short. Mm -hmm. You know, do we just want to all stay together and just kind of make it out, book it out of town? And uh, luckily enough, fortunately for us, um, Captain was very happy to say, hey, look, I'm going to go into town. I'm going to wait for you guys if you guys want to go ahead and finish your trek. And so Mooch and I, you know, we decided, hey, let's go for it. Let's go ahead and, uh, you know, close out the last 32 miles. And we had, we had Saturday and we had Sunday we were working on. And originally we had... Uh, 14 miles planned for Saturday and we had 18 miles planned for Sunday and we thought we were just going to mix that up a little bit uh, get us closer to Ohio pile get us closer to the end of the trail and uh, you know we felt horrible that Captain and Grudge weren't going to be there with us on, on the last mileage but uh, you know these guys had already through hiked the trail I had never uh, through hiked the trail and neither, neither had Mooch so uh, we, we were kind of excited to, to you know take our turn to get through mm -hmm. the trail and, and unfortunately we weren't doing it together so carrying the water into camp uh, Mooch and Grudge pushed ahead of us. Uh, they were done watering up and everything mm -hmm. before we, uh, the X and I were. So they pushed up the hill, and it just so happened the X and I were coming up the hill and cresting that last ridge into camp. Uh, I think it was partially because I was heads down just trying to get my way in. Uh, happened to see a, a track from another visitor there right in the middle of the trail. Looky, looky, look what we found. That's a bear paw. We'll see if we can find Mr. Bear. So after we saw that bear track, we, we hiked like a quarter mile and I'm like, dude, there gotta be more. And I just kept looking and we, we, we crossed a, a horse trail and sure enough, there were, there were obvious horse tracks with obvious bear tracks. Yeah. Uh, and that was, I don't know, a few hundred yards from camp. So had an opportunity potentially to see a bear. Who knows when it was close, but unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, however you look at it, right. we did not see a bear on this trip. Not to concern anybody, it actually would have been pretty cool to get a black bear uh, sighting on this trip, because I think the bear would have been more startled than we would have been. But uh, <laughs> for those who aren't believers, I'll tell you right now, there are definitely black bears hanging around the Southwestern PA. Absolutely. Yep, on the Laurel Ridge, so. So day four of our Laurel Highlands adventure was not only one of the more spectacular days of this particular trip, it ended up becoming 
by the end of the day, uh, one of the most amazing, if not the most amazing days in DBT backcountry history. So we're already working on day four video, so apologies again on taking so long to get the day three video out. The day four video, you're not gonna wanna miss. It was emotional for me to watch the video again as we're going through this uh, editing process and the post-production. Uh, I guarantee it's it's pretty amazing stuff once we get it uploaded for you. So again, like uh, the X Factor said, apologies for taking so long. It's worth the wait. Day four video coming really soon. Thanks y'all.